G'day Australia, good evening world, and salam to our friends from Kuwait. Welcome to the Wealth Boomerang Show. Is this a show about money? Well, the real question is, what is wealth? And what does wealth mean to you? For those who already have millions of dollars, you may desire extra time to spend with your loved ones. A sick millionaire may wish to give all of their money for good health. Some people may want a more fulfilling relationship or a deeper spiritual connection. We believe that whatever you value is wealth to you, and we believe that whatever you send out will come back to you. Every week, we speak to people who have operated their wealth boomerangs correctly. They may have boomeranged back from tragedy to triumph or boomerang back from rags to riches. Either way, their stories will touch, move and inspire you and instruct you along your journey. So sit back, relax and welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jeremy Britton, and this is your Wealth Boomerang Show. Your head is there to dream your dreams. Your feet are there to follow through. Your heart is like a boomerang, boomerang. What you send out comes back to you. Look inside and you will find all your wealth inside of you. Wealth all starts inside your mind. Jean Sheen has a background in nursing and a foreground in medical intuition. Known as the human MRI machine, Jean has the unique gift of being able to see inside of other people's bodies without an x-ray. She balances her metaphysical and psychic abilities with her technical training as a registered nurse. Jean teaches that many diseases such as obesity, cancer and diabetes are associated not with a deficiency of medication, but often with a lack of abundance or a lack of love. Treating physical illness with metaphysical abilities, Jean balances her quantum physics with medical science and believes that everyone has a gift. We may just not recognise it, remember it and wake it up. Thanks for coming onto the show, Jean. Thank you for having me, Jeremy. Now you have the ability to look into everybody's body and see all their internal organs. When did you first become aware of this? Become aware of it, I always was born with it, but become aware of it was mainly about five years old. Um, as children do, they speak very openly and honestly and will say, gosh, mum, that lady's fat or ugly. Or instead of saying those things, I would turn around and say, oh my gosh, that person's going to die or that person has a thing in them. And I couldn't explain cancer because I didn't understand it as a child. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was always there, um, and I just expressed what I knew and saw. So literally, like people walking through the supermarket, you can see someone who's got a tumour, yeah. you can see someone who's yeah. perhaps pregnant or, or whatever, you can see right inside of them? Yes, okay. yes. And is this selective, or you can see everybody all of the time? It's everybody all the time. Just not animals, mm -hmm. only people. Okay. It must be incredibly distracting when you're in a large crowd, though. Uh, it used to be. It used to be, and mm. that was mainly because I tried to switch it off. I tried to switch off my um, gift, mm -hmm. thinking that it wasn't normal because that's what I was taught. But the more I accepted it, it's just like looking at you is normal. Okay, so yeah. you're looking at me, and a normal person would look at me and say, okay, well, he's got hairy arms and he's got a shirt on, but you're actually looking at my colon and my lungs and bits. Well, even deeper. It goes right down to cells or right within the cells, right down to DNA, um, but it's just like you looking at me wearing a black dress mm -hmm. that's normal for you but I just go deeper and okay. it happens all the time but sometimes people look at me and imagine me naked uh, not often but <laughs> yours is like way beyond I mean when you say looking at cells and looking at DNA yeah. do people sort of go well hang on a second uh, yeah I very much get the fruit loop look at mm -hmm. oh how can you do that that's ridiculous that's weird that's not not a doable thing mm -hmm. and I can't explain it with the left brain it's just I'm able to do it I can see it I know the answers and that's it. Okay. And obviously you've got medical evidence for this because you actually became a nurse and learned all the big technical terms for what you were actually seeing as a child. Uh, that happened when I was 16 years old. Um, my mum died on Christmas Day and I couldn't understand why weren't the medical profession actually helping her. When I could see inside her body and see that the body required this, this and this, mm -hmm. why were they not doing it? Why wasn't she helping herself? I wasn't able to speak about it because that was something I was taught as a child, you don't talk about it. So from that time I decided to go into nursing. I then did pathology and autopsies to have a bigger understanding of what was happening inside the body to marry up my metaphysical gift and the medical side so I could speak the language 
um, and it combined it really well. Autopsies, that's usually when they cut someone open to look at why they died and yes. look at their internal organs, but yes. you could do that without cutting someone open. It was confirming what I could see um, and I didn't stay in it very long because I really didn't like it. Um, I didn't like the smell and what they did to bodies um, and it was just to confirm, yep, I'm spot on. I'm spot on with what I was seeing prior and then as we cut the body open, there it was. So it was more confirmation for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you were told, at 16, you were told not to talk about this gift. Um, uh, when, when did it sort of erupt for you? When were you kind of suppressed and, and told to just stop it, telling people what's in their colon? Sure. Um, it was way beyond 16. Um, most children start to talk about it three or four, and they tend to just say whatever's on their mind. It was really at about five years old when we came to Australia from Kuwait and I started to learn English that I was told don't say those things because in my culture it was considered quite evil. Um, for a start, girls weren't meant to talk from the Middle Eastern background, mm -hmm. let alone talk about this sort of thing. Um, it was taboo, it was seen as projecting uh, that disease onto the person. So from five years old, it was taught to me that that was wrong or suppressing my potential was wrong. Okay. Yeah. So like you, you would see someone who was ill and you'd mention it, that was like seen as putting a curse on them or Absolutely, or them. very, very okay. much. So yes. you would have been seen as a witch when you were like five years old? Not in those words, but definitely, yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, can, I can imagine that that would have been very hard for you to, to not say what you're seeing when you can just say, you, you can't turn this on and off? It's not turn it on and off. It's just on all the time. Mm. And yeah, it was extremely hard uh, to the point of that as a teenager, when teenagers are going through their growth spurt, they don't know who they are anyway. And then to deny that gift within me, or I call it potential within me, that made me in quite a low, dark space. And to the point of, at the age of 26, I was suicidal because I couldn't handle not being able to share this at all. Now you, you talk about other people having, having these gifts and repressing them and repression actually leading to depression. So that's a big thing that you have to deal with. Yes, I, and I'm not the only one. If you look at the amount of depression in our world today, which is the biggest disease, what if everybody had a gift, whether cooking soup or making um, orange cake or medical intuition, mm -hmm. and we're virtually told not to shine? I know that sounds contradictory, but yeah, everyone has got a gift. And if we could all shine, gosh, maybe there's no depression. Mm -hmm. Well, as kids, we're taught to, to fit in, not to stand yeah. out. But we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have a chat about discovering your gift and awakening that and what you need to do to actually be more intuitive and shine into your life. Thanks, Jim.